My biggest fear would be when the first comes and I don't get the rent. I found that my tenant had dumped concrete down my toilet. Can you believe Fair Housing fined me $5,000 for that? How do you onboard your tenants? What do you do? I don't even know if I do it right. If you're a landlord, don't just rent, rent perfect. The Rent Perfect Podcast with property expert and private investigator, David Pickron. Well, hello, uh, Scott, Aubrey, welcome today. Thank you. Hey, Glad to be here. You know, um, I want everybody to sub- subscribe, like right now, yes. because we have some really cool things coming, and uh, and we just got a list of things that, we have so many topics that's going to make you just a better landlord, more informed, throw it on in the car, just when you're driving, doing something, and just see if you can get just these little nuggets that come out, you know. If it works for you, use it. Uh, we know you manage your properties the way you manage them. But if we can give you an idea that makes it just that much better, we, that's certainly our goal. Um, hey, we live in a society where everybody seems to be, like, triggered. Like, say the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, on a podcast, I'm always worried about, you know, yeah. meaning something and someone taking me out of context. And then I trigger something. And then in the comments, you know, there's... You know, during the whole eviction moratorium, we could hardly say any words that didn't trigger yeah. certain people to, you know, with the situation they're in. I, I sometimes don't understand how they feel, um, but it's interesting how words can really, really trigger people. Yeah. And I, and I look for words, too, when I am showing a property that trigger me to maybe find out some information that maybe they don't want to tell me. Yeah. But, but I know your kids were in here the other day. Yeah. And you said... Gibraltar, what, what, Gibraltar, uh, Gibraltar, yeah. and they just start laughing. They think it's the f- yeah, and I don't, I don't understand. I mean, my kids aren't little kids anymore. They were kind of gamers growing up, and they huh. still play games, these online, you know, online games and stuff. But yeah, there's, uh, I have a growing list of trigger words that my three, my three sons, kind of have their own little secret lingo, where if I say a word and I'm not, I'm completely unaware that I've said the word, it will set them off. <laughs> They'll start laughing, giggling. You know, have these minor seizures because <laughs> I've said a word. Yeah, I said Gibraltar the other day. It's so, it's so interesting. It's funny as we talk about I remember I was at an event a couple of years ago where someone used the term landlord. Right. And that was a trigger word because right. because we're now housing providers. Right, right. And so, you know, I, I was just like, oh, wow, okay, I didn't, I, I didn't find that offensive, but some others might. So it's, it is interesting. It's creeping into our industry for sure. It is, and uh, ironically, I ran into some of my tenants the other day, and I'm sure maybe the word, the tenant word, is a trigger word yeah. somewhere. Yeah, T word. Ooh, the T word. I don't know, yeah. but <laughs> but you know, it's interesting because um, one of my tenants is with his buddy, and he's like, "Hey, man, I want you to meet my landlord." He called me landlord, so I wasn't offending him, right? But some people out there, and you, you weren't know, offended by the term landlord, no. Yeah. But some people yeah. out there want to talk about you know, how this term goes back to the medieval days. Yeah. I don't even think about that, honestly. Right. I think of a small person who is intimately involved in his property. I think of a housing provider is a big apartment community with maybe a leasing agent and a manager. And, you know, they wouldn't call themselves right. landlords. They're just property managers. And so, you know, I, I think, and I don't know why I'm off on a tent. So you just triggered yeah, me so on, triggered, that, yeah. on that word. Um, well, it's because you, you have your little right. fiefdom that you like to <laughs> rule over. <laughs> And the, yeah, no, <laughs> well, I'm not, I don't want to knock that. I mean, the reality is, is there are some circumstances or maybe some areas where housing provider works. Yeah. And if that's what you, you have the freedom to use that word. And I, I'll, I'll, I love it. Yeah. For as, long, some as long reason, as your check clears, call me whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. No. For some <laughs> reason I've just, um, I guess I've been in the business too long and I'm kind of like, if, if I thought I was offending someone, I would certainly change, you know, yeah. but, but this podcast really isn't about whether you should word use di- yeah, certain words. Right. This is about what are people saying when I'm showing my property that's triggering me, like almost, you know, getting my hair up on my neck mm-hmm. saying we might have a certain situation. Yeah. Now, I recognize a lot of these because I've been doing this for a real long time, but I want to I lay it out super clear for maybe someone who has one or two rentals, hasn't done a whole lot of showings, maybe doesn't understand. I want to give them some years of experience on mm-hmm. words that... That trigger. Yeah, Fra- phrases yeah. and words that trigger that should trigger you as a landlord. So just to start off, one of them is is how quickly can I move in? Okay, to your new landlord, that might go. Oh man, I get this thing rented yeah. right away. 
I can get the money, the deposit. I can get the mortgage paid. How quickly can I? This is great. Yeah, I got a fish on the line. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Now I'm making assumptions here, and someone might really need to move in um, quickly for mm -hmm. a valid reason. So I'm not saying that every time someone asks me this, I'm like, no, no, you know, there's something going on. But it is a word that at least makes me ask myself a few questions and in return ask them a yeah. few more questions. Because how quickly can I move in could mean, not saying it does mean, mm -hmm. but it could mean that the constable or sheriff is at their current residence slapping a sticker on the door with no trespassing saying, you can't come back here. I'm giving possession of this property back to the landlord mm -hmm. because you haven't paid rent or, or whatever the issue right. was. So I need yeah. to find a roof over my head really <coughs> quickly. Yeah. Right. Uh, in other circumstances, you know, with with tornadoes, hurricanes, fires, people's home, very much be yeah. I'm staying in a hotel right now. How quickly can I move in? And those are two completely different stories, um, and that could be 100% valid. Mm -hmm. So trigger words don't mean that it's a no, it's a negative. It just means maybe ask a few yeah, more questions to question see yep. that it makes yep. makes sense. Um, I love when people start asking me questions like, um, do you do a criminal background check? <laughs> I mean, it's pretty yeah. obvious, right? I yeah. mean, that's, that's what's on your mind yeah. and that's, that's what's, as you're looking at my property, that's what you're <coughs> worried about. Not that the, the, the property doesn't work. It's, do I qualify? Yeah. No, nobody ever says, Hey, do you do a criminal background check? Cause I don't have anything <laughs> and you won't find anything. <laughs> Just so you so, know. So you go look your heart out. Yeah. You know. Do your best. Dig right. in as far as you can. You right. weren't going to Nobody right. says that. Right. It but this is a great time to pull out your criteria and say, <laughs> yeah, you know what? We, we treat everybody the same. We have it all documented. Here's the criteria. Mm -hmm. We're looking for seven-year, no felony, five-year, mis what, whatever your criteria is. It's a great time to talk about that. Mm -hmm. Unless you're in Chicago or certain states that say, you need to stay away from this criminal conversation until after you've approved it. Right. Okay, so be be careful. You know what jurisdiction you're in. Most of the country, we can ask for criminal um, information up front, but the wave is slowly moving across the country mm -hmm. where you can't ask that until you give them a preliminary uh, yeah. approval. What one of my favorites is the, uh, we, we might call it a grace period, but how late is too late for my rent to show up? <laughs> <laughs> it, right. it, it tells me that, Right. This might be a, a this might I mean right. you're trying to figure out where's the where's the boundary, right? And wh when am I going to start getting hit with late fees? Yeah, right. That's that's a, that's a scary question. Because to your point a little while ago, if I pay rent all the time, it's not even a thought. Yeah. In my mind, right? Yeah. If you ask me the question, hey, do you mind if I pay my rent on the twenty mm -hmm. eighth when it's not due till the first? Is that okay? Right. Sign me up. Right. Right. Hey, if I pay rent on the sixth, is no, no, my, the fifth is your cutoff date. Okay, you know, yeah. So I mean, it, it says these are these are questions that I think definitely right. cause the hackles to go up on the back of your neck. So if I decide to take the place, how <coughs> much money um, do you need up front? Okay, once again, could be an innocent question. It could be something that warrants a, a few more mm -hmm. questions. And if you said, well, we take first month and a month's worth of deposit, and let's make the math easy, 2000 bucks. So it would be $4,000 mm -hmm. to move in. Huh. Okay. Well, could you, could I pay that deposit later? <laughs> and I get asked this. Can yeah. I, can I make that, de <coughs> that deposit, that deposit? Can I give you like small portions of it over the like next installment? Pay can I do layaway on my right. deposit? Yeah. It's just telling me money's tight. Mm -hmm. um, living paycheck to paycheck when you get in a car accident, when maybe the kids get sick, maybe you get laid off your job, you don't have a lot of cushion behind mm -hmm. you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so now I'm looking at, and I'm never making decisions because I've got to stick to that criteria. Right. But I'm making, I'm, I'm thinking in my head, okay, I've got somebody here, maybe he's a great person. Maybe he's a great, this has nothing to do whether you're good or bad. Mm -hmm. It's just situations that might come up if I rent to you based on what I know yeah. today. So, um, okay. Um, how many people can live here or visit me at one time? Yeah. What's your maximum occupancy? <laughs> <laughs> right. Is it two per room, three per room? Yeah. You know, yeah. um, if I put it, if I put bunk beds in the whole yeah. house, can I sleep 30? How, how yeah. long can they stay <coughs> and still be considered a guest? A guest yeah. Um, if that's on your mind, that's a house that's going to have a lot of people in it. Um, you know, 
whatever the circumstance is, yeah. just something to to think about. And it's a great time to lay out your policy, you know, mm-hmm. because the reality is is you have rules on your property. I think I think last night you went through one where you have no pets on property, right? And you have a property manager up in Utah, one of your properties. Mm-hmm. And they and called I, yeah. you and said, "I get through. Yeah, through the telephone, I get the hey. Uh, there's a large black lab in your Brandley, brand newly, Brandley, Brandley. That's newly. a trigger word. Hey, Brandley. What? Brandley, yeah. Look on that list of your Our kids. Our brand list. newly <laughs> remodeled. You know, fresh floors, <laughs> fresh carpets, fresh rugs, brand new furniture. Uh, and this is about the sixth or so person that's rented the property, and they've got a brand new, you know, big old. Oh, but but their response was, well, he's an old dog." And we didn't let him, because we knew this was a newly remodeled property. We didn't let him get on the furniture or anything. Yeah. We put his food on your brand new wood floors and his right. water bowl. And I'm like, I'm having a little bit of a heart attack going, oh, geez, you know. Right. Um, yeah. But up and over that, you're in a luxury condo on a right. ski resort up there, which the whole condo says no pets, yeah. You right? can't go in an entrance without seeing no pets allowed. Right. So it's not even your rule, but you've got to abide by the whole community's rules. Yep. And this guy brings a big old black lab. Mm-hmm. So what happened? Uh, he's now spending the night at the Best Western in town, <laughs> two nights, at his expense while his family enjoys my condo. <laughs> and and he's going to get dinged with a nice... Uh, cleaning fee, pe- right? Yeah, cleaning fee penalty, I guess, but it, yeah, to get that property back up to, to snuff right. where we want it. Now, do you feel bad about that? That the guy I went feel and horrible. Had I mean, I feel bad that he had to go get this and, and create an extended, you know, extra expense for him, that he and his family aren't together. Separated from his right. family, right? But at the same time, I look at it and go, but you broke the rule. Right. You knew the rule. Yeah, you knew the rule and you broke the rule. So, I wonder how yeah. many people, how many times he got away with that because people didn't have someone peep it on the property or yeah. looking. Like obviously a short-term kind of uh, situation, mm-hmm. but it happens in the long term too. Yeah. You have your rules. They sign their leases. And when they violate that, I mean, the reality is, is we can't feel bad. We just have to manage our property. And because and if we don't, do something about that, then they're going to say, well, then why are you doing something about, you know, too many people living at the property? You're picking and choosing yeah. what you're enforcing on the lease. You have to enforce right. your lease. How many pets is too many pets? Yeah. that's. <laughs> 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 In some of my places, one. Yeah. <laughs> one is too many. You know, and then we go to the whole service dog deal. And if he would have pulled, oh, this is a service mm-hmm. dog. Now you have this, this really bigger issue on proving mm-hmm. if that is a service dog or if he needs a service dog from a letter from his doctor. Yeah. So we're always hoping don't don't pull that. Don't pull that. I almost don't even want to say that on the air and teach people how to, you know, yeah. get their dogs in to uh, but that's on another podcast. Look at our other podcast yep. uh, about service dogs. We have the attorney on and he kind of tells us uh, what we can and can't do there. Um one one last one I want to talk about is because it usually comes like the first couple sentences of the phone call before I even show the property, and that is, are you a professional property manager, or are you the landlord who manages the home? Trigger, complete yeah. trigger. Why do you think they're asking me this question? I th- I think they're trying to figure out what can I get away with, but I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I know that the last place I rented was a property manager, and she was all over it. Yeah. Uh, and a couple times ago, I, I I rented from a sweet little lady that had an extra little home, and she just left me alone, and I got away with everything I yeah. wanted to. Yeah. So rent rent came in on the 15th when it was doing the 5th. Or right. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, really, yeah, how, how strict are we, is this relationship going to be as exactly. we kind of establish things? Exactly. The assumption is the small landlord is just super nice, and we'll let them get away with a yeah. lot of things. So, But hopefully the small landlord's been listening to the Rent Perfect podcasts. And is savvy enough to have gotten some stuff under their, you know, under their wings where they're like, I'm a confident landlord. Absolutely. Yeah. And a small, confident landlord becomes a landlord later that owns 5, 10, 15 mm-hmm. properties and becomes a seasoned property manager yeah. because they've had a lot of success in managing their property. So thank you so much. So many trigger words out there for everybody, I'm sure. I might have said a few today, and if I did, I apologize. <laughs> I don't even know I did, just like Scott and his kids. Um, I mean, what are some other words that your kids say? Are they, like, common words? Are you saying these things all oh, the time? Oh, yeah. I mean, I said something in, the, in response to, like, heirloom the other day, and they thought that was funny, and I don't understand it. Uh, <laughs> rebar. <laughs> Oasis. Apex. And that's a video game one. But, yeah, yeah. these it's, it's just weird. Okay. Uh, this younger generation sometimes. Yeah, I uh, don't get it. We, we love them. <laughs> 
Anyway, so thank you so much for spending your time with us today talking about trigger words. Just keep at it. Listen for these words. Understand that sometimes you need to ask a few more questions when you're triggered by these words. And until next time, continue to rent perfect. <laughs>